We'd like to thank you for coming here over the years, but there's just two days left for you to take advantage of our sales. Two days and the doors will be closed. You're here today, go ahead and get it today. You're touching it, you're feeling, you're looking at it, you're still thinking. No more of that. Take it home with you right now. If you're upstairs on my third floor, there's kids apparel right now. You can get that apparel at now 90% off. There's apparel on the second floor and first floor, 90% off. If you're buying my winter apparel, any winter apparel now, it was at 80, it'll be 90% off plus an additional 20 because it's winter apparel. Now you can get those hats and gloves, maybe a nice winter coat, ladies, at 90% off plus an additional 20%. All sales are final. These items are yours to keep. No returns, no exchanges at any Sears location. So make sure you choose wisely. Ladies, go over to my jewelry department. Don't miss out on this great deal. They're at 90% off. You can get these jewelry. There's bracelets for you. There's earrings for you. There's rings for your fingers. Go over and take a look. There's some gifts for your sister or your daughter or your mom. You can take advantage of that as well. If you're buying fixtures today, all fixtures must go out the building today. You are responsible for removing them from the building and getting them to your vehicle. These items are also final sales and cannot be returned or exchanged. Please take your time and choose wisely. Be good to yourself, and we'd like to thank you for shopping at your Sears on Irving Park. Sears is the last store in the city of Chicago, closes its doors today. The, the last iconic Sears store in Chicago. This is it on Irving Park, Cicero, and Milwaukee in Portage Park. Sears was the Amazon of its day, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, no question about it. It was, you know, you got that catalog. That was like the internet that you had. Sears at the Six Corners intersection in Chicago, Illinois, originally opened in 1938. It is now closing in 2018 after 80 years of operation. The last Sears closing in Chicago is a very big deal for a lot of people. Sears built the tallest building here. This was the city Sears called home for a century. Then they ended up moving out of Chicago to a uh, business park about 40 minutes away. But nevertheless, Chicago was always associated with Sears. But now that legacy has officially pretty much came to an end. Their last store um, has now closed. They currently only operate an auto center and a Kmart within Chicago city limits. On the second to last day, the store was pretty much hollowed out and there wasn't a ton of merchandise for sale. You're currently looking at the second floor of the store, which is where the men's department used to be housed. The mannequin graveyard is currently housed on the second floor. You cannot have a liquidation sale without the mannequin graveyard. That is a rule, especially in its final few weeks. This area is right by the second story display windows that they decided to cover up with Sears Blue Man Crew signs. Let's go up and check out the third floor which used to house the kids and lingerie departments. They didn't have a ton of stuff up here. They did have some kids clothes and some lingerie that was at deep, deep discount, but that was pretty much it. They had some, you know, shelving units and clothing racks for sale.
They have a window you can peer out onto the fire escape, and I would be pretty scared to go on that thing. The store didn't close because it was doing awful. It closed because its landlord, Seritage Growth Properties, which was a spin-off of Sears' most valuable real estate, seized the building from Sears. They plan to announce big uh, redevelopment plans soon for this store and the Galewood store. I don't know exactly uh, what that means yet, but I hope this building just doesn't sit abandoned. I personally hope they find a way to save this building. It's a really interesting building. Uh, they had some pretty vintage Kmart carts here for some reason. So we're now we're going to magically uh, teleport to the fourth floor, which was where the home department was housed, and we're going to go and explore the uh, optical and uh, portrait studios that are now abandoned and wide open. I'm going to cut the music down and the narration through this part. Go back here. And just walk around in this. It's open. Where's the door? I know there's a door back here. Here's the door. The old door. It's locked. Darn it. We've now somehow teleported AGAIN to the basement, which is where all the tools were. Looks like when they removed all the shelving units and they just uncovered like 50 years of just grime and dirt. <laughs> This key shop booth was one of my favorite fixtures here. They had a large section of this floor closed off, and the section that was closed off looked absolutely gross. The floor looked awful. 
You know, it's just a casual pile of trash in the middle of the store. This uh, hallway back into the elevator is really cool. Those doors and that passenger elevator sign have to be extremely old. We've now teleported to the first floor, the busiest floor. Look at that very petite, petite sign. Because it was so crowded on this floor and it was really hard to get footage without a ton of people in it, I will be uh, inserting footage from last year when the store was definitely not as busy. Those doors used to be a store entrance that they ended up closing probably a long time ago. Right here are the front display windows that they used to display stuff in. Do you see how crazy this place was? But the deals were like 80 to 90% off, so it's understandable. Here's the jewelry department in 2017. They also had a watch uh, repair counter, and it looked like it just closed when I was there in July. Okay, so we now have a uh, time traveled again, and we're going to take a look at the appliance and electronics department back in 2017. But first, we're gonna look at the doorway entrance. Uh, because again, this store was way too crowded to, uh, film when I was there on its second last day. We're reverting back in time. <laughs> this part of the store feels like an addition. I don't know if it is, but it kind of has the feeling of an addition. That, uh, sign on the doorway, uh, is pretty cool. That looks pretty old, actually. Uh, the store seemed, you know, actually to be healthy back then. It didn't like, it wasn't like crowded, but it was, you know, healthy. There was, you know, a decent stream of people in the store. And right here is a quick look at the merchandise uh, pickup area. Now we're going to uh, go back to the present day uh, where things are a lot uh, worse. A new trend that I've noticed at all the liquidation sales I've gone to are these oriental rug blowouts. Every single department store of liquidation sale, it feels like is doing one of these. As we head out of the store, we're going to take a look at the outside of the building now. The auto center closed a few months ago. There's still actually one Sears auto center within Chicago city limits. The Ravenswood auto center is still open.
Sears Six Corners, 1938 to 2018. Thank you guys for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Uh, I feel like I didn't really fully adequately cover the history to this store, so I'm going to provide a few links down in the description if you'd like to learn more. One link I would especially like to uh, highlight is a Sears Archives, which is, you know, like, Sears' history website. It actually has an article about this store, specifically on this store. And if you want to learn about the invasion of 1943, or how this store was one of Sears' first department stores without windows. If you really enjoyed this video, it would be really nice if you left a like on it. If you have want to share any thoughts about this video, you should uh, leave them down below in the comment section. And if you want to be, you know, super awesome, you should subscribe to Lost Departments if you want to see even more videos like this. Thank you, as always.